Hey everyone, I'm Marty, this is Bryce, and Aaron says hello from Toronto, and welcome to the final update of 2019. Yeah, and if you haven't heard yet, we have free generative design for the rest of the year, so if you haven't had a chance to play around with it because of cloud credits, feel free to give it a try now. Do it. Let's check it out. Hey all, it's Aaron here, and I get the pleasure of sharing a couple of great updates and one announcement on the generative design front. First, the announcement. Generative design is still free for about 20 more holiday filled days, so don't delay. This again is thanks to the generosity of Amazon Web Services and NVIDIA. And sorry if that's the 15th time you've heard it, but I can almost guarantee you that is news to at least one person watching this video. To help make your generative design experience better during this time, we have some great updates. With this release, we've made it easier to identify design objectives and goals for each study by adding them to the browser. So let's open a sample file, a quick and easy way to delve into the world of generative design, then make some changes to add some advanced physics objectives. Advanced physics objectives are part of a preview technology, so we'll go to turn it on, where we'll note that the preview feature's preferences have had a bit of a facelift. You can now filter by workspaces, and those shown have icons denoting whether the previews are available to everyone, to select users, or are part of an extension package. Anyway, back to where we started, the objectives and goals shown in the browser. We added those to the browser because they can have great effect on outcomes, so identifying and changing them should be easier. As you explore those results, you'll notice an invaluable new filter, the Visual Similarity Filter. The Visual Similarity Filter came about from user feedback. This filter uses machine learning to find and organize results with similar visual characteristics. This makes it easy to find the ones you like and root out the ones you don't. And because this uses machine learning, it'll always adapt to what you're observing. So if you expand your design space with additional studies and refined setups, the filter will continue to update groupings based on those new outcomes. Related to this, while inspecting an outcome, there's a new tool to find similar. This works off the same methodology to find three other similar results helping you find that perfect model with better performance, lower mass, or lower estimated costs. Speaking of which, we're pleased to announce that cost insights have been moved from preview to production after a vetting period. Finally, after exporting that design, we know the chances of it being truly perfect are slim to none. That's why we've always had an emphasis on being able to edit outcomes. So when users reported that they wanted a change to the way our two-axis cutting and two-and-a-half-axis outcome sketches were created, we were all ears. Up to this point, the sketch profiles were only being created for the generated geometry, ignoring the preserved boundaries. Users found that in ignoring those regions, it made those edits more difficult. So we've changed that behavior to also include preserves as part of the sketch profiles. All right, in this update, we're going to add a few delighters to the sketch and model workspace. Since Fusion 360 is connected to the cloud, and the cloud is core to how we store data, it's always been silly when you have to store and insert data from your local hard drive. As you can see, in this update, I can now insert a canvas right from my project. So when you create hand sketches or sketches from Sketchbook, feel free to store them right into your Fusion 360 projects. This will help teams store and use more assets in a centralized location. But we didn't stop there. We can also insert decals into our design via our projects as well. Now on to the next enhancement, and this one's subtly one of my favorites. First, if you're a long-time Fusion 360 user, you will notice that the sketch lines grew one whole pixel. That's right, the sketch lines are now two pixels wide. It's subtle, but it looks cleaner, and I've grown to love it. Not only did we thicken the sketch lines, but we change the colors of the sketch lines a bit depending on which environment you are using. First, take a look at the new profile colors in different environments. Now, you could see how unconstrained, fully constrained, fixed, projected, and cast projected sketch lines appear in each environment. Remember, you can change your environments in other settings down in the navigation bar at the bottom of Fusion 360. All right, this next one is an enhancement to the sheet metal bed and command. I use this command mostly when I import DXFs or DWGs and gotta bend it up into a sheet metal part. Remember, first you'll have to use the flange tool to turn this imported sketch into a sheet metal part. Now, let's start bending. In this update, you can now do multiple bends within the same command. Previously, we would have had to use the bend command five times for this part. 
Within the dialog, the bend angle, the bend direction, and the bend location can, can be controlled independently for each selected bend. This is going to drastically speed up the time to convert this into a Fusion 360 sheet metal design. Uh... Yeah, I'm super thrilled to see those thicker sketch lines come to Fusion. I think it's going to make sketching way easier. Yeah, I honestly love the appearance of the new sketch lines and profiles. I'm a big fan. But hey, there were so many updates this year. I'm so excited for what we were able to de deliver in 2019. Make sure to check out all the old update videos. They're all on YouTube. You can probably find them over here on the right or left. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll see you guys in 2020. Well, that does it for the last update of the year. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being a part of this amazing YouTube and Fusion 360 community. We could not do it without you. Uh, have, a, have a great new year and uh, see you next year.